Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it um, back over to the district governor who's going to introduce our next presenter. Uh, thanks, Claire. As I've mentioned to the clubs that I've had the pleasure of visiting already, uh, we have a really terrific leadership team in District 5160. More than 100 Rotarians are involved in helping provide uh, you know, great support to the clubs and their huge support to me, let me tell you, I really appreciate everything they do. So we have two of those folks who are gonna be coming on now for our next, uh, for our next session. And they are from the Rotary Club of Vacaville, our district membership chair, Carol Landry, and from the Rotary Club of Chico, our, pub, our brand and public image chair, Val Redman. Okay. So I am going to share my screen. Well, we're getting this started. I'll just say good morning to everybody. I'm Carol Landry. Um, I'm from the Rotary Club of Vacaville and I'm this year's district membership chair. Um, and we're going to be talking this morning uh, about attracting new members and diverse members. And I think we all know how important it is to get new members, but I'm gonna particularly talk today about reaching further out to find more diverse members in our communities. So next slide, there we go. So look for new groups in your community to work with. That's our goal today. Uh, next slide. Pardon? What? <laughs> Are you talking to me? Uh, Mark? There we go. All right. So um, to expand your reach beyond your, beyond your current club members, um, it's really important to kind of think about the new audiences that you can seek out. Um, who is in your community that is not currently involved with Rotary? Um, take a look at the different ways those people can interact with your club. Um, I think what we have seen a lot is that clubs are being very flexible in having like they have different membership categories now. We see business memberships, family memberships. We see um, younger people memberships that are, you know, have lower dues. Um, we have memberships that don't uh, require um, paying for like a meal. It makes it a little bit more affordable. We see flexibility with clubs in going, um, like they may be a lunch club, but once a month they meet at night. So it makes it a little easier for other people to connect with them. Uh, we've seen some clubs establish satellite clubs in uh, geographic areas uh, that are a little further away. Um, so, so there's a lot of flexibility right now in Rotary. And, we're, and so it's good to kind of think about if there's ways that your club maybe can connect with groups that they haven't normally connected with, um, but in a different way. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is how can you communicate that impact that your club makes in the community. And um, Val Redman, who is our PR chair, she'll be speaking after me and she'll have a lot more to say about that. All right, next slide. All right, so to start out, um, it's really important to kind of understand the interests and motivations of the groups that are in your community. You know, that, that will help you kind of develop what messages you want to send to them, the activities, the events that will appeal to members of that group. And I, and I should say that when we're talking about um, diverse members, I know people immediately jump to gender, race or ethnicity, uh, maybe age, but there, you know, diversity has many different meanings. It could mean um, income groups that, that are different than what we've seen in the past. Um, it can mean religious affiliations. It might be immigration, immigrant communities in your area. Um, so diversity has a lot of meetings um, beyond just kind of the ones that people immediately jump to. Um, and I think, you know, what Rotary is really trying to emphasize is that we want to represent our community. So our clubs, we want them to look like the communities we're in. And all our communities are different. My, my community in Vacaville is different than the community in Reading or the community in Berkeley. And uh, so it's, you know, and we're all involved in our communities. So we know what our communities look like. And, and we know what our clubs look like. So what you wanna do is kind of take the time to think through, you know, what does my club look like? Who's in there? Um, what does my community look like? And, you know, for some people, their community might not just be the city they're in, they might be more of a region. Um, so, that, you know, it can kind of reach out further than just the town that you're currently meeting in. Um, I know some, some of our clubs kind of move around because they have, you know, 
towns that are near them. And sometimes they meet in one town and not in another. So, um, so, and I think also besides just your own knowledge, it can really help to kind of reach out to get other people's understanding of the community. You know, Chambers of Commerce are an obvious place to start out. They usually have a lot of data about their community. What does it look like? Um, who is where? That type of thing. Um, you can also just go to city governments or county governments. They'll have a lot of information too um, about what does what your community look like? And then, and then of course, what does your Rotary Club look like? Next slide. So after you've kind of spent some time to really understand your club, the community that you're serving, um, then you want to spend some time to kind of identify the groups that are in your community um, or that are connected to your club that you would really like to work more with. So, so these might be groups that you've had some connection with. Maybe you've done a service project with them. Um, maybe you've done fundraisers with them. Um, but you know, some, or it could be a group that you have no connection with, but you would like to have a connection with you. You, there might be a common bond that you have some kind of a group, like maybe you both work a lot with youth groups or, or you like to do seniors, um, senior service projects, you know, but there might be some kind of bond that you were like, you know, we could really have something to work with, with this group of people. We just haven't done that in the past. So. Um, so identify, so think about your understanding community, identify the groups that you would like to start working with more. Next slide. So yeah, well actually this is what I just said, think about the groups, how you want them to feel about your club and how you want them to be involved in your club. And um, I think that kind of goes back to the public relations that I mentioned um, that Val will talk more about. It obviously helps a lot more if when you go talk to a group, they know who you are. Not only do they know who Rotary is worldwide, but they know who your club is. They're like, oh, you're the club that always that does that big fundraiser that helps, you know, youth groups, you know, you know, it, it is very helpful. Or, or it might be something like, you know, oh, you're, you're the club that's, that um, sponsors the park downtown. Uh, so if you have some, that, something that identifies your club and they, you know, they're not just thinking generally, Rotary, they know specifically, oh, this is what your club does. That can help a lot in kind of reaching out to them. Um, and then of course you want to think about, well, how do you want them to be involved? You know, we're talking about membership, which is the obvious one, but it might not always be that. Sometimes it might be just that you'll work together on, on joint projects and, and joint service, uh, something like that. So, all right, next slide. So I think it's important as you're thinking about these groups that you would like to reach, that you be sure to customize your message to each group. Because um, it really does depend on what that group is interested in. Um, so where you can find that commonality between what your club is doing and what that group is interested in. So obviously, you know, if you're reaching out to a group, uh, you know, say it's a, a PTA, so, you know, they're, they're you don't want to go in and say, well, we're really big on Meals on Wheels. So I'm like, well, that's nice, but that's not what they do. So um, you do want to think about what your message should be to them. Um, and that also goes to how you're going to try to have them involved. Um, like if you're reaching out to say a group of teachers and you're like, well, we're a lunch club. And they're like, well, I can't go to that because I'm teaching them. So, um, but maybe you're one of the clubs that has an evening meeting um, or, or some other way that they can be involved with you. So, so it is important to really kind of think about your message to them and does that meet their needs as well all right next slide so after you've already gone through you understand your community you've um, identified groups you want to work with you you've um, customized the message to them to how you would like to work with them how you would like to be involved um, now is the time to actually invite them um, you could just go straight to like, are you interested in membership? But it can actually be a little bit um, better if you just start off with maybe a project or a social event to kind of have them get to know who you are. Um, so particularly if it's a service project that they're interested in and Rody wants to work with them too, um, then you can go ahead and ask, you know, ask them if we can work jointly on a project or even if you come in and just support a project they already have um, they can be very appreciative and that can kind of build up some, some goodwill between your groups. Um, 
You can also do a, like a social event. A lot of times that might be a fundraiser or it just might be purely social just to get to know each other. It kind of depends on the group, you know, which way might make sense to, to go with this. Um, and again, PR is so important. Um, you do want to share anything you do, service event or social, on your social media. Uh, that is the way the modern world talks to each other. So it's very important to use your social media to, to the best. All right, next slide. So, well, actually, I just mentioned promote. Yes, definitely want to go out into the community and make sure that the community knows what you are doing, what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, um, who's in your club. You know, there are a lot of ways, uh, depending on the community you're in, you, you know, you might be able to get newspaper coverage. You know, it, it is, I, I have found it's actually easier to promote in smaller communities because they have, you know, local newspapers or maybe a local radio station. Carol, you're muted. Yes, go. I know. I got some message. It said the host muted me. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. <laughs> so I don't know at what point I was muted, but um, but as you can see, I was talking about promotion and being sure to get out into the community and get the message across of what your club is doing. All right, next slide. So I've kind of talked in general about things to do, but Rotary actually does have a specific worksheet that kind of can help you kind of work through the process of, of um, working on attracting new members and diverse members to your club. So we will actually send out after this a worksheet that you can use in your club. And, and that worksheet, you know, you can take it as an exercise that you might want your membership club, your membership committee to work on, uh, or you might want your board or your whole club might be interested in going through this exercise of really thinking about your group. So, so it starts off really about thinking the groups in your community, who do you want to have be involved in your Rotary Club that's not, not, it's not currently involved, or maybe there's a minimal involvement. Maybe you, you do something joint together, or maybe there's one person in that, in that community involved, but you, know, you think that there's potential for more. Um, and of course, you always do want to start with you know, people that have connections with you. And pro the program alumni, so if you've had people that have been on the foreign exchange, um, they've gone to any of our youth groups um, in the past. And this is where it's very helpful if a club can keep track of their program alumni, um, try to get their email addresses as they go through, because that might be something very useful to contact them um, you know, later, even 10 years later. If they've, if they've gone through a high school program, you know, 10 years later, if they're living still in the area, it might be something that you want to contact them and stay in touch. Um, and also the parents of the uh, youth groups, you know, are also, they are, they're usually very happy about their, their kids' involvement in the, in the youth programs that we offer, and, um, and it might be a good fit for Rotary. So it's, it's, um, it's important to think about them as a potential uh, members for your club. All right, next. So I was talking about the people that are, have some connection to your Rotary Club, but then it, can, it could just be somebody completely outside your club. There might be business groups, there might be other um, organizations in your area, there might be young professional groups um, that you don't actually have contacts with, but you could build contacts um, and they're important in your area. Uh, it could also be a thing like industry groups, you know, maybe there's certain industries that are big in your community that you don't have somebody in your club from that industry and maybe you want to try to reach out to them. So, so as you go through this worksheet, um, try to identify three groups in your area that you think you would really like to have involved and you have, you know, a good chance that it would make a lot of sense for them to be involved. And here's that worksheet that I was talking about. We will send you out this template to use. Um, and it goes through the same questions that I was talking about. What is the group? What, what do they already know about your club? What do you want them to think about your club? Um, how do they get their information? And what do you want them to do? So um, what do they know about your club already? That's all your PR. Um, what do you want them to think about your club? 
uh, might be like, well, maybe you need to do some work. Maybe they need to find out more about your club. Um, how do they get their information? So that could be, you know, are, are they, you know, do they read the local newspaper? Um, or do they have maybe their own uh, bulletins or something that you could actually get some information in? Sometimes, you know, the groups will take like ads for, and you can, you can just buy an ad and just say, you know, hey, we're Rotary, this is what we do. And try to, you know, communicate it. You, you would want, of course, to try to identify it to something that they would be interested in. For instance, if it's a, uh, you know, it's a, a, a parents group, you might want to highlight the fact that we sent, we have our youth clubs um, and our interact clubs and that there were sponsors for them. It's amazing to me how many parents don't actually know that interact is sponsored by Rotary. Um, and then, it, and then, of course, think, well, what do you want them to do? You know, um, like I had mentioned you might want to say like, well, we'd like to um, support a project that they have or we would like them to see if they would come to an event that we're doing. Um, so, so that's the uh, worksheet and so next slide. So to kind of just wrap up on um, engaging with new groups, uh, what characteristics do people in this group share? What, you know, you want to kind of look in your community to see groups of people that have some common characteristic. Um, and I think I had mentioned several of them. It could be all types of things, but if there's some kind of group that's in your community, um, especially helpful if they already have some kind of way that they meet with each other, um, but it might not be. Uh, so what, time event, what type of event or activity could you hold that would appeal to these people? This might be an event you already do, um, or it might be something new that you think would work well with them, or it might be supporting an event that they have. Um, and how do you promote this activity to members of the group? You know, how, you know make sure that they know what you're doing. Um, and then think of a project, your club's completed, and the impact of the project. How would you like to celebrate or share it with that group? And obviously, if you do have projects you've done in the past that this group would be very interested in, <laughs> be sure to tell them about it. So that, that's for sure. So, all right, and next slide. All right, so uh, we will go ahead and send you out that worksheet. I hope you'll consider using it in your club to, to kind of spark some discussion about your community and groups in your community that you could actually try to reach out to and build a relationship that will strengthen your club and, and potentially bring in more members. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this, the Learning Center at My Rotary um, does have a couple classes about building a diverse club and committing to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and in conclusion, I'll just say grow Rotary. All right, thank you. And I'll, I'll move this on to Val. Val, did you, you want to share? Were you going to share am. your... Yeah, hold on here. For some reason, there we go. Everything disappeared. So let me see here. I'm going to share. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. And as I get started, I'm going to be playing a video in a few minutes. So if somebody can't hear the audio, please let me know, um, Claire, because I'm going to rely on you, I think. Yeah, make sure, to click, make sure to click that box in the lower left when you share the video, to make sure that you, you're sharing the audio. Oh. Okay, we'll figure that out in a second okay. as we go. So bear with me. I haven't done this before. Um, okay, so thank you, Carol. And this kind of leads into the portion about branding during COVID. And I kind of want to take a little bit um, and go off of what Carol had talked about for messaging. Um, a really Val, are you there? No? Oh boy, you're having you're having bandwidth problems. Uh, you're frozen, and we can't hear your audio. Oh boy. Okay, folks, this is the one disadvantage of Zoom. Uh oh. <laughs> We're, we we are at, we are always at the mercy of our respective internet providers and. 
how well they provide bandwidth. Um, so hold on for one minute. Let's okay. just see if she can join. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll dance or do something. <clears throat> Where are my donuts, Claire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you I would Google. Okay, we had a couple questions for Carol, so let's um, let's see if we can if we can um, if we can ask a couple um, questions for Carol while okay. we're waiting for um, Val to get back on. Um, so um, so Carol, one of the things um, I know that Val's going to talk about this too, but uh, you know, with the effect of not being able to meet or have events, um, and sometimes social opportunities are limited. So you know. Have, what have you heard about different things that different clubs are doing? Um, you know, actually, I'm going to make another presentation in session two, and we're going to go over quite a bit of that. So okay. I heard the answer to that. Not to steal the thunder from that presentation, but we will okay. talk a lot about the virtual. Okay. Well, does anybody else have any questions about membership that we can talk about while we wait for Val to get back on. I did see a question here, I think from Jane Louie. What's the demographics, age, race, and gender in the district, Rotarians and people in leadership? I can't really speak to the leadership, although as anybody will notice looking at us, there's quite a few women in leadership right now. Yay. But, uh, but uh, as far as the rest of it goes, gender, our district is about a third female, um, which is a little bit more than we see worldwide. Um, but pretty typical for the United States. Uh, so I think worldwide, it's more about 20%, um, but we're pretty typical on that. On age, um, we actually do tend to be an older district. Our age skews higher um, than many of the other clubs, but well, it's definitely worldwide because worldwide Rotary is much younger than what you see in the United States. Um, but even in the United States, we do have a, a, a bit of an older um, age cohort, which is good. We do want older members, but we also want to have um, a, a wide range of age groups. And, uh, okay, so Val is back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, Val, do you want me to drive the slides? Maybe that'll help your bandwidth? Sure. I have okay. no idea. It's weird. It's, we have a couple and I switch, but that's, let's do that. Okay, so hold on. Let me just share. That was working perfectly fine before. So yes. Yeah. And testing, no matter how many times you test these things, that's Murphy's right. law will come into effect. Hold on one second. So I'll go ahead and start while you're moving that over. Um, just to talk a little bit more about the messaging piece, because I don't need the slides for that. But um, one of the things that you want to think about when you're when you're crafting those messages and you're targeting particular audiences, what you want to be able to consider is, um, you know, who are you talking to? So for instance, if you're looking at an awareness piece where you're just trying to let the general public know what Rotary does and what your club is doing, um, you know, that's more of the what you do. So that's kind of the generic piece, right? And if you want to target somebody for membership, you have to think about the, from their perception and, and from their perspective. Oftentimes that's what's in it for me. So as you craft your messages, think about that and think about how you're positioning it and how you're talking to someone to understand why, why would I want to be part of Rotary? How are you speaking to me? So I just kind of wanted to tell you a little bit about that. Um, okay, so as far as branding, you know, right now, obviously, we are in unprecedented times, and I'm sure you are all sick of hearing that term. I know I am, but it's the truth, right? So a lot of us are not, I would say all of us probably are unable to meet as a group. Um, and, you know, a lot of us are doing um, virtual meetings. Some are able to do, they're starting these hybrid meetings. But I think what, instead of focusing what we can't do, I like to focus on what we can do and where are the opportunities that are out there. So first of all, people are engaged online more than ever. So there's a lot of opportunities we can be doing, whether it comes to social media, email, lots of other things that we can do in order to be able to get people online. I love body, uh, Buddy's talk about bringing speakers from the outside in because now you can reach out to folks that are out of the area that could you know, invite and speak via Zoom, which is fantastic. That would be a little bit more difficult if we were all meeting in person. Um, people are craving interaction and connection right now because we're missing, especially when it comes to Rotary, that fellowship piece, we're missing that. So it's really important in thinking about how can we continue to promote and deliver the best interaction and connection we can given what we have. 
And, you know, good news is sought. People are looking for good news right there in this tumultuous time. I don't know about you, but I am tired of my social media feed is nothing but all the negative stuff that's happening. So people are really looking for good news. And so sharing all the great things that are happening, um, I think is super important right now. Next slide, please. So we're gonna cover three areas right now um, and three ways to build the Rotary brand during COVID. So the way that I look at this is this is one of the things that COVID has given us is the gift of time. And so with the gift of time, it gives us a chance to kind of go back and review some of the things that we haven't perhaps had time to do in the past and to kind of think and get creative and strategize about what we could possibly do in the future. So we're gonna to go to, um, we're gonna look at how we're gonna update our branding and all of our assets how we can get creative, specifically with content, and what we can do to amplify our visibility of the Rotary brand as a whole. Next slide, please. Okay, so the first one is to update your club assets. Um, this is a big thing. So as we know, there is a, ro a new Rotary logo, as you can see in the, on the left here, and I'm still seeing clubs that are using an out-of-date logo. So one of the best things you could do is head on over to brandcenter.rotary.org. You can also access it through My Rotary and it's your same DACDB login. It's really easy to access, and there is a lot of information there, including every kind of logo you would want, um, not only for Rotary, but also for Rotaract and Interact. So if you need those um, things, you can get those as well. Um, and you can download them, make sure that you're, you're updating all of your, your website, uh, anything you maybe have on social or any other of your assets that you guys use, even for any new clothing you do, anything like that. Um, as far as your website goes, you know, um, update your website to have your current meeting style and location. I have an image down there that's um, my club's website. And what we did on the homepage was um, the internet committee just took a, took a snapshot of a meeting that we had had and that rotates out. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to update it um, in just a little bit here with some updated information, some other campaign that we're working on. But down below that, which you can't really see, it talks about where we're meeting. So how we're meeting online, um, what the Zoom link is, the time, all of the different information. So it makes it really easy for people that are checking us out to come join in at the meeting at any time. Um, you know, if you have the ability, add a blog and start sharing projects. Because here's what I love. If someone's going to come to your website to check out about who you are, think about it. It's basically an online calling card or online business card. You can use a blog to tell your story. So you can start sharing projects. And right now, even though maybe we're not doing current projects, I'm sure you've all done loads of them in the past. So create some blog posts and talk about what you've done in the past and highlight those. And what that does is when someone comes to visit and they see all the activity they, that you guys do, whether that's a prospective member, they can say, oh my gosh, I wanna be part of something like this. Um, it could also be the media that comes to see a little bit. Maybe they wanna write a story about a project that you've done or just about your club as a whole or any other person that comes and just wants to learn a little bit more. Um, you know, update photos from past events in projects. A lot of times this is something that gets overlooked. Websites get built, oftentimes they're stagnant, and then, you know, it's, you look and these are photos of yourself maybe from a decade ago. And while we would all like our look maybe from a decade ago, we still need to keep everything current. So it's important to go through and update um, imagery and projects so people know you are currently active. It wasn't like you just built it and forgot it. And then Buddy had mentioned this earlier too, was to keep your calendar updated. Super crucial to go through and keep that. People know who your speakers are, where you're meeting, what you're doing, if you are doing any other projects, um, if you're doing maybe small group projects, something like that so people know. So keep that calendar updated. And then add current membership information as well. Is there a packet that someone needs to download? Um, what is it that you have on, do you even have current membership information on your website. Sometimes that's missing. So this is a huge opportunity right now. And if anyone needs assistance with their website, feel free to reach out. We've got some members on the PI team that um, are experts in this and would be happy to help you. So don't hesitate to reach out. Next slide, please. So get creative with content. You know, I've seen, I saw some of the um, questions that were coming through about, hey, we're not meeting now. We're not necessarily doing projects. What do we do? So what you can be doing is telling the story of what Rotary does. And again, think about how you're going to share this so that you can, you know, expand your reach beyond your own club members. So repurpose photos of past projects. You know, there's on social media, there's things they call them like 
Memory Monday or Throwback Thursday. You could really do it anyway, any, t- any day of the week. But the idea is that you pull back something you've already done, bring it back to the surface, rewrite a post and talk about, you know, gosh, back in the days when we could get together, it was so much fun when we did, you know, we worked um, to fill all the books in the little free libraries in our community, or we did this work on at the Boys and Girls Club, whatever it might be, and show photos so that you're still staying relevant. Um, Create a public service campaign around COVID best practices. You know, one of the things we got creative in our club was to think, what could we do to keep our, to keep our name out there? Because we aren't able to get together. And especially as a large club, um, we definitely can't do that. So we've done a couple different things. Um, the first one is we, cr- we created a, camp- a campaign called I Wear It For, which is surrounding um, the promotion of wearing masks. And this is actually an example of a billboard that we did. So what we did was we reached out to our local billboard company and said, hey, do you have any openings, any available billboards that you might be able to give us a deal on? And they loved the campaign so much, they were more than happy to do that because obviously with businesses closed and and income reduced, it hurts their business as well. So they were more than happy to assist us with giving us a great deal to make it very affordable. So we got different age Rotarians. So this is Kaylee, she's one of our younger Rotarians and had them have what their message was, who they wear it for. We did so, We have a social media campaign going, a billboard campaign, and we're just starting radio as well. And so these are ideas that you can think about in your community. How can you do a public service campaign? And I wanna encourage you to reach out to your media and if you talk to them and have a plan, oftentimes they will give you a scream and deal. Sometimes they'll do it for free. Oftentimes they have PSA um, pieces set aside for free. So if it's not already taken, Um, Especially with, you know, sometimes this month might be a little tough um, due to the elections coming up, but once November hits, that usually frees up more. So feel free, and I want to encourage you to do that. Okay, next one, please. Next slide. Um, uh, While I make sure that this is going to play and have people hear it, why don't, there's a question here about how do you, about how do you market and get traction with a blog? How do you get, how do you bring people to your blog who don't know anything about Rotary? Okay. So once you write your stories, what you can then do is take the link and post it to your social media. And um, you can also be sending it out to different organizations and say, hey, I wanted to share this, something you might be interested in learning a little bit more. But a great way is to put that link, drop it into social media, make sure you have an image there so that it'll populate in your social media. And you can use that to drive people to your blog. Okay. Yeah. I think we're ready to go. Let's, is, oh. Is this the right one? It, it, this is the one you showed? Isn't this the one? Uh, this one looks different. Let's see what it looks like at the beginning. For over 100 years, Rotary members have taken action when challenges arise. We know what people can do when they come together and put others before themselves. The team lead said they will continue the campaign to fight against the coronavirus. Local Rotary clubs deliver food and supplies to people in need. Strangers become friends, helping hands multiply, and problems turn into solutions. We are Rotary. We are people of action. Learn more at rotary.org slash action. For over 100 years. Okay, that was actually a different video, but that's okay. For over 100 years. (laughs) It's along the same line, so it's fine. So the reason I wanted to share this was to show you what um, Brand Central has available. And so as we're looking for content, this is an amazing time um, to be able to go to Brand Central and utilize some of the pieces and the material that Rotary International has put together. And this kind of a spot that you just saw, you could, you could play on your social media, you could have been in your, in your website if you'd like, if you don't have something that your club has done. Um, you can also go to your television stations and say, and I know some of you that live in the Bay, you know, you have bigger stations, but you can still do this and say, hey, can, is there, do you have any opportunity to be able to play this um, in your PSA time so that we can expand the reach of what Rotary is doing? The one that I wanted to show was it was the were this close and it was focused on the ending polio it's a great 30 second piece and i want to encourage all of you this is world polio month right and and polio day i believe is october 24th if i have the date correct yeah so we we're definitely going to be doing more on the district and i want to encourage all of you um 
to be able, I know Mike Crosby, we, like, so we've got a, 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 I believe a presentation going out. I'm happy to work with any of the clubs and helping to promote that message for this month and for that day in particular. But there are assets available at Rotary International at Brand Central where you can go and pull them down and start posting them on social media. Like I said, reach out to local, um, your local media and see what we can do to get that brand out there. This is a wonderful time to get the brand at large out to our community. Um, okay, so and I, I'm happy to answer more questions about that a little bit later. Um, actually, can you go back one more, Claire? Oh. All right. So. Um, amplify visibility. So what I want to do is challenge each and every one of you to see how many places in the next 60 days you can place that yellow rotary wheel. How many places can you do that? So for instance, do you have signs at previous or existing project sites? You know, that's one of the best things you could do, whether you need to maybe, you might have to connect with your city to see if you can actually put a sign there. Um, you may already have one. Have you gone and checked on it? What does it look like? Does it need to be replaced? Oftentimes these signs are placed and then forgotten about. So go review all of those, see what you can have where it says Rotary at work or a project completed by Rotary. Um, reach out to those organizations, <clears throat> excuse me, that you've already partnered with or done work for and see if they can place a Rotary logo either on their website or even write a, a blog about your project. Maybe you can work with them to create a, a joint story or something like that. Um, again, you can do a social media campaign to drive awareness. So again, you, you can use some of these Rotary International pieces to drive a general awareness campaign, or you can look at what can you do when they do have assets there avail um, as well to target membership because two different messages. And one of the other things I'd like to encourage you to do is for those of you that have Facebook pages for your clubs is to add a Facebook event for your weekly meeting and ask your network, invite your network to join. Right. So that what's great about using a Facebook event is that it will pop up the day of or the night before to remind people that that meeting is there. So if you'd like to invite guests, it's a wonderful way to do it. You have to set a new event every time, every week, but that's OK. It's great. You can talk about what speaker you're going to have, um, all the different things that are happening. It's a great way to get the word out. And we already talked about reaching out to the media to discuss World Polio Day. And then wear that rotary apparel when you're out on projects, when you're going to Costco, whatever it is, just start wearing your swag and let's get the rotary name out there even more. Um, okay, so next slide. And I think that's it. So thank you. That's my information. Um, you are all welcome to email or call me and um, I am happy to connect you and see what I can do and or connect you with anyone on the public image um, committee to help. I think we're on to questions. Yes. Um, there's a couple of points that that, uh, that there are a lot of uh, old faded uh, rotary, so rotary signs out there in the world and maybe we could take this opportunity to update them. Um, and questions, um, there was one question, um, there, there was one club that had a problem when they posted the link to their meeting on uh, Facebook and they got Zoom bombed. So that is something that people do need to be aware of um, yes. and just be careful about. I, I think yeah. that's been addressed by some of the new security protocols that Zoom has uh, uh, started since that, um, that, that challenge. That's true. Um, and then um, there's, there's just some comments in here about you know, finding speakers uh, that you know that had polio or that have experienced some of the some of sure. you know people with a good personal story. Absolutely, you know, and that's something too. Another idea that came to mind is if for those of you that haven't experimented with Facebook Live, it's pretty easy to do. Um, you can also, I, I believe, you can also. I've never actually done it myself, but um, streamed Zoom to YouTube um, if you don't have YouTube or, or some of the other channels as well. Um, I don't know what package you need to have that. And I've actually, like I said, have not done that, but from what I understand you can, um, but Facebook live is a great way to do it. So if you've got somebody, or even if you want to pre-record a video, if you've got someone that had polio or could talk to that, you could just record something. And, you know, Arnie Gustafson is working, is our conference chair and he's been playing around with video and he's becoming quite the little pro at it. And it didn't, it wasn't very hard for him to learn how to do. So it's very doable. And you could do something like that and put it on your social media. But Facebook Lives are fantastic. Even if you have your club president that just wants to go on Facebook Live and 
um, you know, just let everyone know that it's World Polio Day, what's happening, what polio or what Rotary has done, um, you know, maybe direct them to the website, something of that nature. You know, Facebook Lives pop to the top of everybody's feed, and it's one of the best organic things you can do to be able to get noticed. So it's a, it's a great tool to utilize. And don't be scared of it. Yeah. Well, that addresses the questions that are in the, uh, in the box right now, Val. Okay. A couple of people have asked for your email and somebody's posted it in there. So I think you'll be getting some follow-up questions. All right, so thank you. Thanks to you and Carol for great information and a great presentation.